My name is Susan Buchanan. I'm the Executive Director of Tall Pines Conservancy in Neshoto. And my presentation today is about the role of land trusts in water quality. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm Susan Buchanan. I'm the Executive Director of Tall Pines Conservancy. Just generally, a land trust is a nonprofit organization that works to preserve land through the purchase of land or by receiving conservation easements. And we are locally based. We work with various community organizations in our community. We provide landowners with options for conserving land. And we partner with local governments and organizations to protect land. And we believe that we contribute quite a bit to the quality of life in our communities. I'd like to ask you what you think the number one reason is for a family or a landowner to protect their land. Can anybody tell me what the number one reason is? We have a couple of board members in the audience here, uh, John Kepke and Kyle Zwig, which I think one of you could tell us. It's a loaded question. Yeah. Absolutely. Because both of you worked very hard to work with your family. It's a huge decision, family-wise, to protect land in perpetuity um, with a conservation easement. But there are other re reasons to protect land as well, and one of the reasons we're here today is to talk about protecting land really helps with water recharge and, and water quality. Um, also protecting wildlife, as well as keeping farms viable for future generations. So conservation options, uh, ways to protect your land. Um, you can simply donate your land uh, to us, to a qualified organization such as a land trust. Um, you can sell your land to us. Uh, you can bequest it. Um, or you can donate or sell a conservation easement. A conservation easement is a legal agreement between a landowner and a qualified holder, such as a land trust or a municipality, that permanently limits the use of the land in order to protect its conservation values. And I also wanted to note that a conservation easement runs with the land in perpetuity. So if you were to place an easement on your land and you would go to sell that land, the easement is a legal agreement that runs with the land. So the next landowner would be required to work with that easement. And we, as the land trust, our fiduciary responsibility is to monitor that easement to make sure that the conservation values are being lived up to for the term of the easement. And I also want to mention that it can be very flexible. We've had easements where landowners might want to reserve the right to build one house. Um, we've had easements, um, farmland easements, where uh, a certain amount of area is kept out of the easement, where the farm operations are happening. So we basically work to customize those easements with people. The benefit of donating an easement, I think, is that it qualifies as a charitable tax deduction. But also, again, it comes back to that family legacy of really wanting to protect the land um, forever. Specifically to Tall Pines, our mission is driven with farmland protection and also with water resource protection. Our background is we were uh, formed in 1999 as the Shaniqua Area Land Conservancy, but in, in, and basically we're working to protect um, properties along Pine Lake of which we have protected about 120 acres of farmland uh, on the west side of Pine, Pine Lake by conservation easements. But then in 2005, we broadened our mission to take in more of lake country, per se, um, northwestern Waukesha County. And since then, we've broadened our vision even more. Basically, so we're northwestern Waukesha County, southeastern Dodge, and southwestern Washington County. Um, basically for our, our farmland protection, we've been working in all those areas. We're very partnership oriented. Um, one of the reasons we're here today is because of the Oconomowoc River Watershed Protection Program, of which we're partners with over 30 other uh, community-based and uh, government-based organizations. Um, these are just a few people that we work with. So 
in talking about our farmland preservation work, we worked in partnership with the northern half of the town of Oconomowoc and the entire town of Ashapin in Dodge County. And that ag enterprise area really promotes farmland preservation agreements. This was one of the first in that program. So we're happy to be a partner in that. Most of our farms that we have protected, and um, we have protected at Tall Pines approximately 1,500 acres. 900 of those are farmland acres. We've done that with purchase of development right programs. Um, there used to be the PACE program, uh, the statewide purchase of development uh, rights program that is now not funded but we use that program to purchase um, the development rights on the Zwig farm, which is 233 acre, six generational farm located right along the Rock River in Ashapin. What's neat about this is being right along the river containing some wetlands, it's definitely a high groundwater recharge area. We also protected the Kepke Pleasant View farm, borders the city of Oconomowoc and basically could have had 60 houses or more if, if it were annexed. Another farm that we protected that's a little different is the Serenity Farm in the town of Oconomowoc, and that is 116 acres. It's adjacent to the Ashapin Greenway, which is 300 acres of protected land by the county. Um, we like to protect land in large contiguous swaths. Um, that's where we can make a big difference. Um, this is also an example. This couple runs a community supported agriculture um, farm and uh, I think I mentioned it's along the, the Ashapin River. And the most recent farm that we protected is adjacent to the Zwig farm in the town of Ashapin and Lebanon and is right along the Rock River and Davy Creek. Um, it's a 300 plus acre farm. We wrote into the easement six different management zones. The family very much wanting to have the property managed in a certain way for future generations. And one of those zones includes their um, managed forest. So they're doing sustainable forestry, which is important to, um, to groundwater recharge and water quality. And on this land, there could have been four houses uh, developed. And I failed to mention that on the Zwig land, it could have been up to 20 houses developed as well. So then, jumping into our watershed protection, I think it was 2014, we started working, taking more of a watershed approach. Um, nationally, land trusts were working towards watershed approaches. And so Patal Pines began exploring that. And within that, we started working on Mason Creek, uh, which is one of the three feeder streams that goes into North Lake, of which the North Lake Management District had identified as the biggest culprit for um, depositing a large amount of sediment into North Lake. So we began working with many different organizations, many different partners, pulling them together to try to figure out why was this little creek dumping all this sediment into North Lake? It just didn't seem possible. But um, <laughs> then, then the North Lake Management District applied for and received a grant to hire Sewer Pack to do a river management plan um, for Mason Creek. And they have been, uh, that plan is almost done. Uh, so with that, I would like to invite Jill Bedford, our land conservationist, to come up and talk a little bit more about Mason Creek. Mason Creek is, it's funny how such a small little body of water, you can literally drive over it on CW and not even know you're crossing a little stream. It's about a little over four and a half miles long. It's only eight square miles of watershed. It's multiple personality stream. And it's almost like if you needed a demonstration stream to display all the possible land use practices, beautiful pristine trout filled waters, silt in some sections that are knee deep, and yet you have some areas that are buffered with beautiful wetlands and sedge meadows, other areas where farming 
um, and we don't blame the farmers for this, just want to make as much money as they can off their farm. And years ago, at the turn of the century, that's what we were encouraged to do, drain the wetlands and turn them into productive farmland. So it's um, when we first started working with the North Lake Management District, and uh, they said we really have to do something that was shortly after that huge flooding we had in 2008. And when, when that rain event comes, as we all know, the, the streams just swell, the Rock River spreads way out, and as it recedes, it just grabs all that soil and brings it into the system. Well, what we first did on the creek is decided to walk the entire creek. And I have never had such an awakening. If you close your eyes, Mason Creek started out its life as a pristine trout stream. And it still remains a pristine trout stream. Last Yesterday, I emailed our fishery expert, Ben Hessner, and he wrote this to me in the email. Because I keep hearing all the data. This stream has had more study done on it. Uh, for all the reasons, we want to end up with a master plan to help us with recommendations on how we can clean up this creek. When those rain events occur, in North Lake, you see a huge plume of chocolate milk going out into the lake. It's filled with phosphorus and nutrients. The aquatic weeds start growing. The fisheries are, are compromised. And that's the main reason for the focus of how do we get this silt out of this stream. So uh, Ben wrote this. Nason Creek has naturally reproducing population of trout with catch rates from 300 to 1,000 captured trout per mile. That's a lot. And he said, we only have a few fishable brook trout streams in Waukesha County, Mason Creek being one of the best. But that's the part of the stream that's beautiful and pristine. You have cobblestones and riffles and pools, and you can lift a stone and find a mayfly, which is the trout's favorite food. You can walk a little ways upstream, and literally, if you were alone, you, you might end up living the rest of your life there. You get so stuck in muck. And then some of the stream is just beautiful, meandering like it was at the beginning of its life, where it's just taken on its own route as life goes on. And then all of a sudden, it's a straight, deep channel without any relation to the wetland next to it. So it's, it's interesting. It'll be fun. As you see the report come out this spring, we plan to have a public informational meeting to present the report. And truly, this report could represent streams all around our state and the nation on what, what is happening with water quality and with, with uh, the native habitats.